Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, one last tutorial on Plan G. Today we're going to talk building an IFR flight plan with Plan G. Now, I've shown the overview of Plan G, and I've gone over how to do a VFR flight plan with it, and an IFR flight plan is very, very similar. First, we want to make sure we have IFR selected here. Now, an IFR flight plan is exactly the same as, plan as uh, VFR, except the way you build the route is different. Recall with the VFR flight plan we could pretty much go anywhere we wanted to. We first went to a VOR and then we just followed the river south until we hit an airport and then we went to another VOR and then to our destination. So that's a pretty good VFR flight plan. You just follow the river, you can see it in the simulator, all that fun stuff. However, with an IFR flight plan, you build it assuming you cannot see outside the plane or cannot see the ground. So we need to stick to the airways for the most part. Now, Plan G uses the, the built-in database with Flight Simulator uh, or whatever database you're using. Uh, I'm using Flight SimX, so I'm going to build off of that. But we should know that it's not up to date. So one thing I like to do, and this is a payware add-on right here. This is FS Build, and it's a really, really good flight planner um, because... I mean, yeah, there are more advanced flight planners out there, like uh, Pro Flight Planner X, but Pro Flight Planner X is definitely way more suited to airliners, and so is SimBrief if you use it. But what if you want to fly a King Air or a Learjet or something like that? Well, then those two add-ons are going to be overkill because they're designed for airliners. Uh, FS Build will work no matter what you're flying. So FS Build is great for planning IFR flight plans for GA aircraft. Or we can use skyvector.com here, which is one thing I like to use because we can actually look at the en route charts and get like we would a real pilot flight planning. So, I have three thing, ways I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, these blue airways here, these are RNAV airways. They are not present in Flight Simulator because RNAV airways were not a thing when the Flight Simulator X database was built. Uh, so we have to stick to the Victor Airways, not the Tango Airways. All right, so we're going to be flying Tampa to Kajax in a Beach 200 Super King Air. So here's the direct line from Sky Vector, as you can see. Now the good what the good thing I like about planning with Sky Vector first is you can see where SIGMETs, AIRMETs, weather, TFRs, where all that is. If you go to layers, you can turn that on, various things, even wind barbs if you want to. So here's a TFR, here's a SIGMET, all that fun stuff. So I can immediately see a route we can take. We could either go direct to the Ocala VOR. Let's real quick go to Plan G and see the range on that VOR. So I'm going to show VOR range. Okay, so Ocala. Ocala range is just outside of Tampa. Now we will be un under IFR, so we will be getting air traffic control. We could file Ocala as the first waypoint, even though its range is too far away. Re ATC could give us radar vectors. However, we don't want to do that, seeing as though, seeing as though um, we may not be flying RNAV equipped aircraft, although we're in a King Air, maybe we want to use the VORs. Well, one thing we can do is plan to use this airway. Uh, what ATC could do is tell us to fly runway heading and intercept this airway here. Which airway is this? Victor 441. In which case, we would have to tune this VOR and set the radial so we know which airway to intercept. Alright, so let's build the flight planet in Sky Vector first. We first uh, let's intersect the Victor 441 airway at NITS, this intersection right here. And then from there we can go to Ocala. Now, I'm going to stop it right here because we have a choice at this point. We could either go on the RNAV airway, which would be a much more direct line, or we could take the Victor airway north and then around. Uh, which one we take depends on which flight planner we want to use. I want to use Plan G for this, not FS Build. So I will plan for the Victor Airway, Gators, and then Molna. Now, note I'm only 
putting in the waypoints where the airway turns. This is fine for building your general flight plan. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to do a quick flight plan, Tampa to Jax. And now I'm going to input the waypoints from Sky Vector. So caps lock N I T T S O C F N G N V M O N I A. So there we have Nitz, Ocala, Gators, and Mona from here. And I've typed them in here and click OK. So now we have the flight plan in. So this is a good way to build IFR flight plans in FSX is just build them from Sky Vector and input the waypoints into Plan G with the quick flight plan tool. And now I can zoom in and just trace the route in Plan G and add the other waypoints if I want to. Or we can stick it like this. Remember, an airway is just a straight line between VORs or between point of intersection of two VOR radials. The only other uh, intersection I would need to add is BOCAP here. So if I wanted to add BOCAP to the plan, which you would want to, I guess, but you don't technically have to, it would be a good idea to know where BOCAP is, though. So after GNV, we'll insert BOCAP after Gators VOR. There we go. And that terminates at Molna. Uh, what's the other air VOR? Hmm. Anyway, that terminates at Mona, and we'll get ve vectors to Jax. Uh, you can also, like you, you should when you're doing instrument flight plans, you want to look and see about which approach you're going to get. As you can see, Mona would be a, we'd probably start getting vectors for final prior to hitting Mona. So that's one way. We built the flight plan with Sky Vector and then just translated it into Plan G. You can do a similar thing with Plan G. If I just hit a new flight plan and let's go a different airway. So first I'm going to put a quick flight plan in and I just want to see the direct line between Tampa and Jax. And we're going to take a different route this time. So without using Sky Vector, I'm going to build my IFR flight plan. Well, I immediately see a way I can do it. If I select Tampa, and our, we see an airway we can take here to Jensen and then follow it up. This is Victor 152. So we're going to want to intercept Victor 152 after we take off. What's the first intersection on Victor 152 would be Plummy right here. So we will insert Plummy after Tampa. And then looks like we got Queed or Need after Plummy and Jensen after Need. Oops. Delete. Yes, I clicked the wrong thing. So Need, we have Jensen after Need. There we go. Then the airway will turn upwards to Kaiser and see what I'm doing here is I'm just building it and with the direct line first I can see the direct course to my uh, destination airport so this airways have taken me around the R restricted areas uh, this here is J53 I do know there is an airway that parallels J53 a Victor airway so We'll just follow that on up. Now it's showing J53. We would have to look at a chart to see what airway that is, Victor, which Victor airway that is, and that is Victor 267. See, it's not wanting to show Victor 267 because J53 is right on top of it, the two parallel, but remember your jet airways are the high altitude ones. If we want to stick to low altitude, we got to use the Victor airways. I could right click, but it's still only showing J53. All right, so I'll uh, edit, use the frame function, 
I'll use the edit function, sorry, and start editing my flight plan this way. And what I'm doing with this is I'm adding the intersections along the Victor Airway to my flight plan. Royce looks like it. So here we can build a good IFR flight plan using Plan G alone. But there is one other way we can do an IFR flight plan with Plan G, and this is the method I primarily use, this uh, next method I'm about to teach you. All right, so if I edit, exit the edit mode, there. So if I frame this route so we get it all in one chart, there we go. So from Tampa along an airway here, that way. So that's using Plan G, and we're stuck in, sticking to the Victor Airways the entire time. Since uh, there's no there's no Tango Airways we can use, but there is one other way we can do this. I'm going to go back to Sky Vector, and now I'm going to plan the flight plan using the Tango Airways. So the Tango Airways starts at the Ocala VOR and goes to this intersection then this intersection, and then to Craig. And as you can see, that is a much more direct route than the other two routes we followed. Although the first one where we went north along Victor 441, uh, that one wasn't too terribly bad. And you also see we could have used Victor 579 to go straight to Gators instead of going to Ocala first. But I went to Ocala because I want to do this. So let's put this into FS Build now. So I have the route. N-I-T-T-S. Then we took Victor 441 to Ocala. And then we took... Tango 211, FS Build does support RNAV Airways to Craig. And now, real quick, we'll just build it. And yeah, you can do a lot with FS Build. I could go ahead and set my alternate destination and altitude. Uh, let's say 14,000 for my cruise altitude. Build it one more time just to make sure everything's right. Okay, so this is a 176 nautical mile trip. Now uh, you can build flight plans from FS Build without using any other source too. But the reason I'm using FS Build is because I want to show you this. If we wanted to use Plan G and have our route show up and use these RNAV airways, we'll first build it in Plan G, export to FSX, build it. Now Plan G, Plan G, FS Build will export this flight plan in a PLN format to FSX. Minimize that, minimize that, maximize this, and now we can open. If we open show PLN files, Tampa the Jacks, bada bing, bada boom. So now we can see the route. So this is if we built with Sky, Ve Sky Vector and FS Build then we would want to import this into Plan G so we can see the route on Plan G because we would want to connect with Plan G so we can see traffic and all that and the other things that FS Build just doesn't do. So as you can see from here on out it's just like the uh, VFR flight plan. We're done with the route we just need to decide on altitude and file it. So we would check we would pick an altitude and then that is all we need. You can export it to FSX if you want to build further on it, you can, but that right there, the route and the altitude is the bare, basic, all you need to do a flight plan in FSX. Any, anything else, such as fuel, is just a lot of fluff. Now, obviously, if you're flying a jet, you're going to want to do precise fuel calculations, but with a King Air, we could just probably fill the tanks depending on our payload. If we want to, we can click at the, uh, not that, the plan, and I did have the King Air selected, I believe. Yep, Beach 200 Super King Air. And we're, we're going to need at least 500 pounds of fuel. 
that will give us a good uh, good uh, extra amount of fuel because it's planning for an econ cruise of 554. Does it not have a reserve for some reason? Oh well. So we would throw in 500 pounds of fuel. That would be the bare minimum we would need for this route. Then plan for the reserve and yeah, we'll be good to go. Alright, so that was flight planning with FS Build. Uh, well, with FS Build, Sky Vector, and Plan G. This, that was how you do IFR flights. Remember, with IFR flights, you need to stick close to the airways and you need to file along these airways. That way, ATC knows which way you're going. With VFR flights, you can pretty much go anywhere and just follow the landmarks. But with IFR flights, you have to stick to the published airways for obvious reasons. Very rarely are you ever going to be able to go direct with an IFR flight. Now, if I was going from, say, Tampa to Orlando, yeah, you could probably get away with going direct IFR that. But any other route, no, you're going to have to use an airway. So that was flight planning with Plan G IFR flight plans. And that concludes the Plan G tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.